Hello and welcome to the short and sweet of the Queen's Gambit decline. The purpose of this short and sweet course is to give you an overview and a sweet preview, hopefully, of the whole course of the Queen's Gambit declined that I created for Chessable. But also, it should also give it should give you the basic information uh, you need to actually start playing the Queen's Gambit declined yourselves. Hopefully, it also uh, sparks your curiosity and then you go and check the main course for the details so let's get a let's get and see what this overview means and how you can start playing the queen's gambit declined after finishing this short and sweet course so d4 d5 c4 e6 knight c3 and now the first important moment for for black bishop e7 now uh, the usual way usual in uh, well inverted commas way uh, is to go knight f6 here but i have chosen to uh, the move bishop e7 as the preferred move order because after uh, this in a way avoids the uh, exchange variation in the queen's gamut where uh, white manages to put the knight on e2 so to give you an illustration after knight f6 let's say cd ed bishop g5 bishop e7 e3 c6 bishop d3 what we get here is that first white managed to prevent the development of the bishop on f5 and second he gets to develop this knight on e2 which is the so-called botvinnik uh, setup in the queens in the exchange variation of the queen's gamma decline which nowadays is still considered one of the most critical tries for white so therefore by putting the bishop on e7 uh, black is basically waiting for white to play knight f3 so that after knight f6 he has avoided both the bot phoenix setup and as we will shortly see uh, if white chooses the exchange variation he can then freely develop the bishop on f5 still with this all the being said white can still go for the exchange variation only that this time he can't develop the bishop on g5 he can develop it on f4 and second, he still cannot prevent the development of the bishop on f5. So in a way, this is some sort of a concession from white, even though, of course, this is a perfectly viable and popular way for white to, to react to the move order with bishop e7. So c6, the recommended move. The idea is to go bishop d6 and exchange this active bishop and also to liberate then the, the square e7 for the knight so that bishop f5 can be played. Uh, two main moves here for white uh, e3 and queen c2 uh, after e3 we follow with the idea bishop d6 and after this exchange bishop d3 we go knight e7 with the idea to control that f5 square and allow for bishop f5 uh, white has uh, several alternatives here of course um, uh, the move queen c2 will transpose to the queen c2 uh, to the to the line with queen c2 on move six, whereas here, for example, let's see what happens after f3 with the idea of bishop f5 e4. But now instead of bishop f5, we go knight f5, attacking that pawn, and wanting to castle, play rook e8 and attack that pawn. So white is more or less obliged to take, and after this capture e4 bishop g6, this is a very good uh, position for black because this center can actually be subject to attack. So, for example, knight g2, of course, if e5, queen b4 is kind of unpleasant. And uh, then the center can be further undermined with c5 or f6. Whereas after knight g2, d4, fe4, short castle, short castle, knight d7, this is a very comfortable uh, position for black, as this center can be attacked. One idea for black is to push c5, to force d5, and then the knight can comfortably slot on the fine blockading square on e5. The alternative is to go queen c2 on move 6, yeah, here, queen c2, and after bishop d6, bishop d6, queen d6, e3, knight e7, go bishop d3. So now preventing this development of the bishop on f5, but luckily for, uh, for black, he has an alternative, he can go b6 and go to a6. Why the move g6 here doesn't work is explained in the main course. 
but uh, what um, as a as a general rule you should know that um, uh, if one idea doesn't work then the the other will work so if some for example b6 bishop a6 is prevented then black goes let's say g6 and bishop f5 or in this case g6 bishop f5 is prevented then black goes b6 and bishop a6 so the good uh, thing to remember is that that bishop gets exchanged in, in all variations so b6 knight f3 bishop a6 mission accomplished and after short castle take on d3 knight d7 black has a very solid position he will castle and then he's ready to deal with either white central push yeah, which he can simply uh, ignore for the time being or maybe take and and, uh, and uh, create an IQP but he can also allow white to push e5 and then he can attack this uh, center by the undermining move c5 or f6 um, or the second plan white has at his disposal for example doubling of the rooks on the c file which can then be met by uh, the, uh, uh, the the very useful maneuver for black in these structures when the rook is removed from f8, knight f8 and knight e6. So the knight on e6 is uh, very useful square, uh, is a very useful piece uh, on e6 because uh, it supports the c5 push and then uh, exerts some more pressure on white center. So a very comfortable middle game position for, for black in this case as well. So as you can see, the, the exchange variation, while possible for white, is not really much threatening as, as this uh, plan with c6, bishop, d6, followed by the exchange of the light squared bishop, gives black a very solid uh, position. So knight f3, uh, going for the uh, queen's gambit decline, let's say, basic position. And here... Um, there are four main tries, there are a bit more, but these four are the most, let's say, critical ones. Uh, and they are bishop g5 and bishop f4, which are the main, really main lines. The exchange variation, which is harmless, but we need to know how to react to it. And also the Catalan attempt with g3. The Catalan attempt is a bit, uh, is gaining in popularity, to be honest, because everything involving the, the fianchetto of the light squared bishop is gaining in popularity. Uh, in this case, it's a bit uh, um, strange in a way because the knight is already on c3. And yeah, that makes it a bit more difficult to, to for example, uh, regain the pawn on, on c4. But still, it's still a variation of the Catalan and um, normal option for, for white. So after short castle, bishop g2, dc. Now white is at a crossroad. He can try and play knight e5 to get the pawn back immediately, or he can go short castle and try in more Catalan manner to perhaps play for compensation after e4, or then later somehow recapture this pawn on c4. So let's examine both options. Yeah. So after short castle, knight c6 is a good move to make uh, with, a, uh, with a few ideas in mind. One, and which I like the most, is the so the, the Rogozin, you could say, idea, uh, uh, which is often found in the Rogozin defense when the bishop from b4 drops back to d6, the knight is developed on c6, and after dc, black pushes through e5. I quite like this idea because it's uh, it solves the problem of the bishop in the most natural way by pushing through e5 and also liberates uh, black's position. Another idea of the knight c6 move is that it liberates the b8 square for the rook. So the rook can just move and maybe perhaps uh, maybe prepare b5. Yeah, and the knight can also, if in some lines, go to a5 to defend this pawn or sometimes even b4 and maybe go to d3, depending. So as you can see, multi-purpose move knight c6. Um, e3, uh, white is strengthening the center and then wants to concentrate by knight d2 perhaps to, to take that pawn on c4. In case of e4, yeah, uh, black cannot play anymore. There goes in plan with bishop d6 due to e5, but he can switch the plan and go a6 now and then follow up with b5. And he will have safely um, defended this extra pawn and he will have an extra pawn with a solid position. The bishop can be developed on b7, the knight can go to b4, d3 perhaps. The liberating move c5 can happen, so solid position with the pawn up. In case of e3, now switching to the Rogozin idea of bishop d6, knight d2, e5, and black is already doing great. 
after knight c4, ed, ed, bishop g4, black has an excellent position. The queen is kind of lacking good squares to go to. d2 is blocking the bishop, f3 is too ugly. Queen b3 allows complications after knight d4, which are good for black. This is the main line uh, I'm examining in the full course. And uh, the positional idea after bishop g4 is queen d7 and bishop h3. Yeah, just to exchange this strong bishop. So as you can see, it's uh, while possible to play like this, it's actually, to, to go short castle, it's actually leading to a very good middle game position for, for black. Knight e5 is a more direct attempt, immediately wanting to take the bishop. And now the line I'm suggesting is the line um, uh, based on a, uh, on an idea by Kromnik. Actually, it's not his idea. It's an idea that he uh, brought back to the limelight, and that's the move queen d6. Uh, strange move at first sight, but actually a move with several ideas behind it. Uh, the queen obviously will not stay there. It's it's en route to a6, and a6 is, is surprisingly a very uh, efficient and effective effective square for the queen. It defends b7. First of all, yeah, it allows for the, the for the development of the bishop. It allows also for the development of the knight on c6 because it lends support to c6 as well. And also defends the pawn on c4 if allowed to be defended. Yeah. The queen on a6 also liberated the square d8 for the rook. So you see a multiple purpose move, queen d6. So queen c4 taking the Pawn, queen a6, queen b3, and now knight c6. You see, attacking with tempo, and also liberating the rook for the b5 push. So this is a good, good way to finish development. The bishop can later go to b7 or d7. Black will have a very good development. So e3, and now rook b8, and threatening b5. And uh, uh, already... This is very good because this is, black is on the verge of, of um, uh, pushing through b5 or finishing development, bishop d7, rook c8, and so on. Uh, there was a, uh, I analyzed in the chapter on the model games. Uh, in the full course, I analyzed this very, well, impressive game, Fiddler Kramnik, where Kramnik employed this idea with black and won a very nice uh, endgame uh, against Peter Fiddler. So, this, I think, um, uh, idea of queen d6 is a pretty good, uh, also practical idea against um, uh, white's knight e5. So the Catalan, transposing to the Catalan is possible, of course, but I don't think it's too um, threatening to black. Another move that is not very threatening is the uh, transposition to the exchange variation. Uh, the reason being that uh, as I mentioned, the knight cannot can no longer go to e2, but the, the the more important reason is that black gets to develop the bishop on f5. So after ed, bishop g5, c6, c, queen c2, attempting to prevent that bishop f5. If e3, of course, the bishop is coming to f5. So queen c2, and now g6. The bishop will come to f5. Yeah, black is insisting on it. Uh, an attempt to prevent that and change the character of the game is possible, but after these exchanges here, and check king f8, don't be uh, upset about this, the king is coming to g7 soon enough, and uh, uh, he, will, he won't have problems with the development of the rook on h8. Uh, bishop c4, bishop f5, winning tempo for the development, giving check another tempo, bishop e2, and now... Just don't make the blunder of losing a piece like this. Yeah. For example. So don't do that. Go h5 instead. Yeah. So there is no g4. And then the king can come there. The knight can come to d7. It's a complex middle game position bar. But where black is obviously very comfortable with the bishop pair. And this play against the IQP. If he manages to establish control. Um. Of the square in front of it yeah so e4 while possible uh, it's not really played nowadays but anyway generally speaking the the exchange variation is not uh, in this version is not played very much <laughs> nowadays e3 is the natural move but then the bishop is coming to f5 and after this exchange 
Knight d7 is a precise move to make. Uh, don't automatically castle. Not that it is wrong, but it just allows this for extra possibility for white. And then he gets his minority attack going a bit faster. So knight d7. The idea being if he takes it, taking with the knight and the bishop remains uh, 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 control over the c4 of the, the b4 square. And after something like normal moves, short castle, short castle, rook b1. Wanting to go for the minority attack, a5 is a useful move to make uh, because after a3, b4 and a, b, a, b, the rook will be developed without having left its starting position. So queen c2, rook e8, preparing the knight jump to e4, uh, a3, preparing b4, knight e4 now, and after this exchange b4, we have the typical now move which uh, is very important to to um, play knight d6 removing the knight from this uh, from e4 but controlling c4 this is the key black immediately takes advantage of the fact that this uh, square has been weakened and um, uh, in this variation a very good defense against the minority attack by white is actually black playing the move b5 and then transferring this knight to c4. So in this case, this plugs the c file and, and uh, makes the weakness on c6 uh, irrelevant. Uh, Black already has a very good position. And um, in the in the model games, I analyzed two very instructive games uh, on the Carlsbad structure. These are Bobots of Petrosian and uh, Nikolic Kramnik, where um, I show in both of them how Black actually can easily play for a win starting from, from these Carl, simplified Carlsbad positions. So, uh, and they are, uh, they show in like, uh, on, on the example of these great players, how to outplay your opponent without, uh, who, who does not even make mistakes. And this is all because of the character of these Carlsbad structures. Once that have been simplified, they are in fact turning a bit uh, in, in Black's favor. So I would recommend uh, checking out, out those games. So, this is the reason why the exchange variation is not played with the knight on f3. So, that means that if white wants to achieve something against the queen's gambit decline, he must go for one of the main lines, either bishop f4 or bishop g5. Uh, there have been periods in chess history uh, that um, of various popularity of each of these moves. At one time, bishop g5 was exclusively played, or almost exclusively played. Some other periods, bishop f4, and one of those periods when bishop f4 is actually the more popular move is nowadays. The reason for this is that after bishop g5, uh, apart from the uh, line I am proposing uh, in this course, the, the defense with knight bd7 as, as played by Kramnik, uh, the alternatives are also good. The Tartakover variation with b6, the Lasker variation with knight e4, and uh, all these lines offer black uh, great play. So it was a practical choice by the white players to start looking for an advantage in the line with bishop f4. Uh, still, even here, things are far from easy for white because black has very several, I would say, uh, good uh, choices against bishop f4. And the one I propose is the uh, formerly, uh, well, the traditionally considered main line with c5 after short castle e3 c5 the alternatives being knight d7 and b6 c5 and here in this line i um, as you we will soon see i'm proposing a, a line that was um, invented back in the 70s uh, by uh, karpov second igor zaitsev for the match against korchno in baggio and karpov actually got to use this uh, invention but uh, Coach Noy's uh, great reaction, basically it, it was considered for many years to have refuted this idea by Igor Zaitsev. But then, uh, I think uh, four years ago, well, 2015, there was this uh, little known game, which I also examined in the Model Games chapter, uh, the game uh, Tarjan Zumsande, that, led, that started the revolution in this line and uh, then Nakamura picked it up and everybody else and... Uh, uh, nowadays, this line is one of the main ideas for black against the bishop f4 line. So let's see what uh, what that is and uh, how we get there. So c5, dc5, uh, getting rid of this 
uh, tension in the center, bishop c5, a3 is the main move, cd is possible, and it's a major alternative now, knight d it's possible to capture with the pawn, but I prefer with the knight, because after exchanging these knights, there is this check on, on b4 that is a bit unpleasant, so a3, preventing the check, knight c6, uh, the IQP position is quite uh, good for black in this case, because he has good control over the square in front of it, which doesn't allow white to establish a good grip and blockade of the IQP. Bishop d3, not just a developing move, be careful. Uh, the threat is bishop h7, and after king h7, queen c2 check and winning the bishop, or simply queen c2 with a double attack here and here. So once you know this is the threat, bishop b6 is an automatic move to make, and after short castle, bishop g4. Finishing development, putting more pressure in the on white's position. After h3, bishop h5, uh, black is ready to push through d4. And this is a, like a, one of the factors that um, uh, it is good to check whether the IQP position is good for the possessor of the IQP is the control of the, of the square in front of that pawn. In this case, black has excellent control over the d4 square. He can use that to push the pawn to d4. And normally this factor, if uh, present, means that the possessor of the IQP has a good version of that position. So b4 and now d4. This is the most uh, direct way, and it equalizes. It has been relatively recently played by Anand, uh, so it's a good stamp of approval. In the model games chapter, I analyzed the same idea of d4 uh, after the inclusion of the moves rook e8, rook c1, a6, for example. Um, and this idea of uh, sacrificing the, the IQP for a good blockade in front of it uh, is a very uh, important one to know. And like I said, I analyzed this in, in a bit more detail in the, in the model game Van Veli Kasparov. And uh, I show the, the uh, possibilities it opens for, for black. So it's a, but anyway, it's a good, uh, a good um, positional idea to know. So going back to the main line a3, knight c6 developing, queen c2, queen a5, all these pins are very important in the position. Rook d1, getting away from, from the pin on the a-file. Uh, long castle is a possibility, sharp one, but after a6, threatening dc and b5 or b5 immediately, black has very good play. Of course, the alternatives are all dealt with in the full course and all the details on long castle as well. And here we're just uh, considering checking the main line, which is the most likely um, to be played. And this is the, the first moment, rook e8, this is, the, this is Zaitsev's idea. Looks like a logical move though, putting the rook on the same file as the king, pre preparing e5. It's a very logical move. Uh, but then uh, it took the idea many, many years to actually be appreciated. Knight d2, more or less the only move, breaking the pin of the, on the diagonal and threatening something like knight b3. E5, expanding, attacking the bishop, going forward, bishop g5, more or less the only move. White is also having some threats of his own. Knight d4, helped by the rook being on e8. Cannot really be taken because then it's just disaster for white. And then queen b1, the only move. There are alternatives like queen c1 or queen a4, but they lead to, to an immediate draw. For example, queen c1, bishop f5, and then knight c2, knight d4, some perpetual check, or queen a4 exchange there, and knight c2, knight d4, perpetual check. So the only way for white to, to fight for an advantage is to go queen b1, uh, bishop f5, attacking the queen, bishop d3, and this is the turning point in the whole variation. Back in 1978, Karpov played the, you could say, natural move e4, but this killed, killed the dynamism of black's position. After bishop c2, white was better, and Kochnoi won a very good game. Nowadays, the engines even say bishop f1 is even stronger, but that's a bit too much, I would say. Uh, so it, it was considered that with his strong play, Kochnoi refuted this whole line. But then uh, in 2015, this, this game I mentioned um, featured the move bishop d3. You could say natural move. What's more natural? Take the bishop. And then after queen d3, knight d4. 
and this is a very picturesque position. Uh, this is the starting point actually of the of the complications that that are uh, that follow because there are many options for white. He can take on e4 with one knight, with the other knight. He can take on d5, perhaps. Um, so there are there are uh, quite a few options here for white, and I analyze this in, in great detail in the in the course. But uh, what is important to know is, is that these uh, complications are actually in in, um, in um, uh, Black's favor, or at least in, in a sense that they give him a good position. So um, even if you have to figure out these complications yourself, uh, what should be a guiding principle and a comforting thought is that this is good for white. The only way is, okay, the task would be to uh, figure out how and figure out the exact moves how this is uh, exactly good for, for black. So this line led, as I said, the, to the resurrection of the, of the whole uh, uh, main line with c5 against the bishop f4 line, and this move rook e8 is uh, one that uh, uh, th was the reason for, for that resurrection. Uh, while we are at the topic, I can also mention the, uh, the rook, rook d8 instead of rook e8. So just let me show, uh, which I do not cover in the course because it was not known when, when I was uh, creating the course, uh, rook d8. Uh, another interesting move, it was introduced by Caruana in his uh, World Championship match by Carlsen in 2018. And it also leads to some uh, good, good play for, for Black. So as you can see, developments have happened in the meantime, though uh, the good thing for, for, for us to know is that the, the move actually suggested in the course Rook E8 is, is still very much alive and kicking and gives Black a very good and also not goes quite exciting, I would say, and dynamic play. So this, as you can see, bishop f4 is very much topical, but also quite an exciting line and one to look forward to when playing with black. So going back to the main position, let's check the other main move, bishop g5. Um, h6, this is what uh, uh, everybody's playing nowadays. In the old days, people were not so sure. They were mostly castling and not playing h6. And now major choice for white. Uh, take or not to take, a Shakespearean choice. Um, well, bishop h4 is a bit more critical, but bishop f6 is perfectly uh, acceptable, of course. And after bishop f6, e3, there are, of course, many other moves, queen d2, queen b3, rook c1, and so on. But e3 is the main one, the most natural one, uh, finishing development. Many of these moves have been tested in the Karpov-Kasparov matches in the mid-80s. And um, uh, I have used these games as uh, basis uh, when I was studying the Queen's Gambit decline myself for my own use long before I created this course. And uh, many of the reactions and variations they established back then are still valid today. So this just shows the, the, the potency of their analysis um, Machines, you could say machines like uh, people who were working at that time, not the machines, the hardware. Nowadays, most of these conclusions are uh, confirmed by the machines, the hardware of today. So after E3 short castle, again, white choice for white. Let's briefly look at uh, a few of them. Queen B3 is a move that puts pressure on the D5 pawn. So C6 is forced to maintain that central presence. And... Uh, now, uh, this more or less determines uh, Black's next development, which will be knight on d7, b6, and bishop b7. And then in this sort of Moscow variation uh, uh, line of the Slav, that sort of development, he can also further go g6, bishop g7. Black is ready for any play white can start in the center. He can then go take on c4, push c5, take on e4, push c5. Uh, depending what what white does, so it's a very solid development without any weaknesses. And uh, after that is completed, black will be ready for the middle game. Queen d2. Uh, this has been established, like I said, from the mid 80s. That the best reaction here is to prepare the c5 push by first taking, eliminating the the tension in the center. 
and after bishop c4 knight d7 and c5 is coming so after short castle c5 this black is already equal and this was established in the carp of kasparov matches what is important to know is how to to develop them what to do with these pieces and after this exchange on d4 the knight will go to b6 to liberate d7 for the bishop this is the important thing to know uh, that was queen d2 queen c2 the queen uh, leaves the control over the d4 square so c5 is a move to be played to put pressure immediately there and after dc dc the symmetrical reply the reason being that rook d1 can be a bit unpleasant so get rid of that tension immediately and then attack the pawn on c5 with the knight if knight c5 allowed it would be just great and trying to disrupt the structure by c6 doesn't aid much because uh, uh, this gives the b file to black okay and this isolated pawn can actually be useful as after c5 it controls the important d4 square and then black has really smooth development the bishop comes to b7 the queen to e7 the knight can go to b6 for example very good development so queen c2 this was also tested in the kasparov karpov matches and uh, uh, it memorably gave Karpov his fifth uh, match win in that unlimited match but nowadays it's considered uh, uh, neutralized rook c1 this on the other hand gave Kasparov a memorable win uh, in game 22 I think uh, um, yeah 22 yeah of the London Leningrad match in 1986 but ever since then it has been neutralized again uh, uh, thanks to the uh, analytical efforts of both teams so c6 uh, with the rook on c1 this in a way discourages uh, c5 so c6 strengthening the center and after bishop d3 knight d7 short castle now the the move i recommend is the move a6 uh, in those matches the move the main even now there's the theoretically main move is considered dc followed by e5 but this uh, this leads to a lot of uh, forcing play where black needs to memorize really long and rather complex lines to eventually make a perpetual uh, make a draw with a perpetual check deep into the endgame so I thought this was not really a practical choice for the repertoire so I, I suggested this less known move a6 uh, which is uh, based more on, on understanding and the moves, uh, I mean the the, um, uh, the ideas behind the moves are, are two. One is to take on c4 and then play b5, c5 and open the diagonal for the bishop on b7. And the other one is to play b5 perhaps immediately to grab space on the queen side. And say that after cd, cd, then bishop still is developed on b7 and black has finished development. So... In my, in my view, this is a better, uh, more practical and more fighting choice for black because at least it, it doesn't, doesn't end with a, a perpetual check deep into the end game. So, as you can see, the lines with bishop f6, though still remain a valid option for white, have been mostly uh, neutralized. So, going back to bishop h4, short castle e3, knight d7 is the starting point and uh, the line I chose for, for this course um, from a theoretical aspect things are not looking too great for white because both the, the alternatives 94 the Lasker variation and b6 the Tartakova variation are both theoretically extremely reliable for black and they give black really good play uh, based on these three uh, in comparing these three the, actually the setup with knight d7 is the, is the simplest one to play and the, with the least theory and, and probably most reliable as well um, and this is, these were the reasons why I chose to recommend it for, for this course uh, it was thanks to Kramnik's efforts that it was noticed even though um, other players have played it before of course um, and the, the idea of the move is to just play c5. So c5 is, is now better controlled. Yeah, just play c5. Uh, so rook c1, c5. Here we see the, the idea. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, the further idea is that after cd knight d5, we have this attack on the bishop. And after bishop e7, the knight is going back and taking on e7. And now we have, we, we see the, the, the idea of the, um, of, of Kramnik's um, uh, uh, setup. Yeah, the knight on e7 is uh, managed to avoid being taken and to, to, to have an isolated queen's pawn. And now black has two options how to develop the bishop. Most often it will be developed b6, b6, b6 bishop, b7. And or alternatively, the knight will go to f6 and the bishop will be developed on d7. So these, uh, depending on what white plays, these have been covered in more detail in the full course, of course. Uh, but um, the only thing you, you need to know to be able to start playing the queen's gambit is to know that these are the options and then Depending on circumstances, you calculate and uh, decide which one uh, fits the occasion better. Uh, again, I would like to refer you to this uh, very impressive game, which I analyze in the Model Games chapter, uh, the game uh, Salem Kramnik, where Black managed to beat a very strong player from uh, you would what you would say is a dead equal endgame. And uh, the way Kramnik managed is, is very instructive, very eye-opening. It was at least very eye-opening for me. And it will not only show you how to, to play this variation and the end game that comes after it, but I think it will also teach you a couple of things about chess, what good chess is, what uh, high-level technique is, and the underlying uh, dynamics of a, of a game of chess in, um, in these high-level encounters. This concludes our analysis uh, of the uh, short and sweet course. I hope uh, it's a compact, uh, practical um, uh, overview of the whole opening. And uh, I hope it gives you the confidence to just uh, go out there and, and start, it, uh, start playing it and testing it out yourselves. And also I hope it sparks your curiosity enough so you check the full course as well. Uh, apart from the full course, also check the, the, the model games chapter, which is an upgrade to the full course that I added and which I think the, the games analyzed there will greatly um, uh, improve your understanding, not only of the opening, but also uh, for chess in general. Well, good luck with the Queen's Gambit decline and uh, thanks for watching.